Uh, let me thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity. I'm very happy that the session is pre-pawned. Most of the time, we are used to have a postponed sessions. I'm Dr. Khaide. I passed from Tata way back when, once upon a time, there used to be only two seats. So for the newer generation, probably you're not aware. Uh, I'm very active in the virtual world rather than the real world. I'm very active on Twitter and WhatsApp. If any of the medical oncology forums, if you see four or five people uh, having an argument or discussion against one person, then unless put otherwise that one person has to be me. So that is how it is. And Thank you. Thanks, thanks. So I have no conflict of interest to declare. I don't know whether Dr. Sunil is here. Sunil and me both used to work in Prince Ali Khan together for a few, time, few months. And all MRS used to go and meet Sunil only. So nobody meets me, so I don't have any conflict of interest. But I have a lot of interest. And I want to show you this particular slide. This is the analysis projected for 2023 sales of top pharma brands by Bloomberg. And if you see Kaitroda, they call it King Kaitroda. The sell is 23.8 billion. So those in this hall are talking against or for the low dose IO. You have to understand you are fighting against a billion dollar industry. And if you see the OBDO is not far behind, it is number six. And I am pretty sure that most of us are not aware that how many zeros are there when you convert 23.8 billion dollars into an INR. So uh, we have to understand that we are fighting against a big rock, a billion dollar industry. But yes, there are studies, and there are three of these studies that I will be discussing now. Uh, one of them was, is the comparative effectiveness of and safety of standard dose and low dose Pembro in the patients with non-small cell lung cancer. This was published in Cancer Journal in February 2022. It is an open access journal. What I found it very interesting, it is a study done in Taiwan. Please note, and if you see this, the PI is a pharmacist. So are the other three authors. Only one is an oncologist in that. It is a retrospective data, eight hospital data taken from EMR. It is from 2016 to 2019. Please understand, they were using these so-called low dose from 2016. So the, the data was stressed up to 2020, December, median follow-up of 10.1 months. They have two arms, 147 patients got so-called uh, standard dose. And please see that their definition of standard dose is 2 mg per kg, not the fixed dose What in this particular study. 95 patients got less than 2 mg per kg dose. 108 patients were excluded because they got only one dose of Pembro. Around 50% got chemotherapy along with IO. It was mainly adeno CA. 40 to 50% had PDL1 more than 50% and around 14% of brain meds. So what they have shown, if you see the OS, it is statistically better for the 2 mg per kg but it is not uh, numerically better, but not statistically better. And they have shown that the Pembro efficacy is same in both the arms. What interesting thing they have done is, if you see the, 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 the small chart which is given on the right side down, they have found out how much low is low. So what they have shown is that anything less than 0.8 mg per kg, probably we are losing the efficacy part. So anything above 1.8 mg per kg, they have shown that the efficacy will be as good as 2 mg per kg. So this is again the first paper. It is a retrospective data. Second paper that we are going to discuss is the modified dose PEMRO and prognostic outcomes among, again, non-small cell lung cancer. Again, it's a retrospective study. Again, it is from Taiwan. Again, the PI is a pharmacist. Please understand that the pharmacists are doing such studies. In India, the only thing that the pharmacist is concerned is how much is the margin? Uh, whether it is 10%, 20%, 30%, they are not bothered about doing studies in India. So this is something that uh, we should keep back of our mind. It's again a retrospective study, single center study, July 2, 2018 to December 2020. They have used fixed dose versus 2 mg per kg dose. Uh, uh, 36 patients, small subset, 84% uh, were adeno CA, 48% have pdl one above 50, 40% have chemo plus IO, median follow-up was around 7.9 months. Again, what they have shown is the results is probably the same uh, in both the fixed dose as well as the, the 2 mg per kg dose. And they have tried to study whether the NLR, that is the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, can be used as a biomarker. And what they have found that the modified dose is better if NLR is less than 5 and in second line use. The third paper that we are going to discuss is the efficacy of flat low dose NIVO in an advanced cancer. This is from Belgium. 
This, of course, was done by oncologists, the first author of the medical oncologist. It is an 18-patient data, retrospective data, case series. What is important is that they have used only 10 mg2 weekly. That is 0.1 mg per kg dose. Again, from June, Jan 2016, two patients got CR. One of them was synovial sarcoma. Another was MSI high colon cancer. Five got stable disease. Two got PR. Nine with progressive disease. And five are still alive at the time of analysis, which was done somewhere in 2020 end. So these are the three studies. Again, we will, of course, criticize that there are small numbers, the retrospective data. There is a lot of censoring of the data. There is a non-relative record keeping. Chemotherapy is not uniform. One may argue that these studies have low scientific value. Of course, we all agree. These are retrospective studies and very small numbers. And this prospective randomized data is always better. But do you think that these studies have no value? Please understand, we must applaud that such studies are done by pharmacists in Taiwan. We must applaud that the ethics committee allowed such studies. Dr. Vijay can talk a, a, a one hour lecture about the so-called ethical terrorism. We call it ethical terrorism. How the ethics committee terrorizes such kind of studies. We must applaud that in, since 2016 to 2018, in a small country like Taiwan and Belgium, everyone is cost sensitive. Everyone is thinking, everyone is doing studies to find out how can we have improve outcomes and how can we use modified dose of Pembro and Nevo. We are in 2022 end in India and still we are not convinced we are not using this freely. But a small country like Taiwan, small country like uh, Belgium, they are using it. See, the another point that I wanted to emphasize is that wh why such studies are coming from Taiwan. See, the peculiarity is that uh, whenever this uh, so-called Western multinational wants to do a multicentric study, they want patients from Asian ethnicity. ethnicity. The China doesn't go well along with the US-based or the Europe-based MNCs. So they found patients from Taiwan and other is Korea. So these are the two countries where you will get maximum IO studies patients are recruited. So we must applaud that their drug approval body has not objected to such modified dose in spite no local data or Western data. Our DCGI will think 10 times. They will say, no, the company is not coming to us, so we cannot give just like that approval. ICMR will too say, oh, show us the data. But if such questions are not asked in those countries. We must applaud that they're able to maintain record, collaborate, and compile that record. This is, again, we are lacking. So what is our situation? This is exactly Indian oncologists waiting for divine intervention for approval of low dose IO. From where this divine intervention is going to come, they look at the sky. Oh, the NCCN will give it one fine day. Oh, the USFDA will give it one fine day. Somebody will give it one fine day. So because of a lot of the so-called uh, movement of the low-dose IO, as of now, we have only two indications approved officially by map. This is a photo taken from their PAP program, the leaflet that they give. Only two indications. One is metastatic melanoma. And the other is a second line non-small cell lung cancer in which you, are, you can use officially a milligram per kilogram dose. For the rest of the all indications, what they say is, teen guna dose dena padega. So that is exactly what they're saying. For rest of the dose, they, the company is going to tell you, teen guna dose dena padega. So this is our situation. What can we learn? Use 2 mg per kg dose whenever feasible. Whenever feasible, that means you give the option of the fixed dose. If the patient is affording, patient has finances, insurance, whatever, the money is there, use it. If it doesn't have, please do not hesitate in using 2 mg per kg dose. Keep the record of such data. Compile such data. Publish such data. That is the only way forward to get 2 mg per kg dosing approved along with fixed dose schedule. Please understand, Bhagwan ke barose mat betho. Kya pata, Bhagwan tumhare barose betho. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, thank you, Dr. Amol. Uh, we have got a lot of time left because the panel discussion has not taken place. Hey, it is there. Okay. So, so I hope at the end of this talk, yeah. at least some of us will start using it. Okay. Not only using it, documenting it. I know few of the people are already using it. I think uh, this Vineet is using it in Delhi. Uh, Amol Patel is using it. We must compile such data, keep a record, publish it, and that probably will as an automatically come as an evidence. 
rather than waiting for USF to give approval or ICMR to give an approval or an, um, any other guideline giving us approval. So for Nivo, we have 40, like those or 20 MG we are giving. But here for Pembro, we have weight uh, based low dose. Sorry, low dose. So is it like flat dose for Pembro low? Like 40 MG or 50 MG or something like that? Or no, Nivo, it is not weight based. See, NIVO, the, the original study, the, the PKPI studies, in fact, they have shown that as low as 0.3 mg per kg also works. And uh, he has, Vijay has put that reference in his paper. So in the Belgium study, they have used only 10 milligram. So Pembro, the first paper that I showed, what they have shown is that anything less than 1.8 mg per kg probably is not as efficacious. So the bottom line is one should keep it at least above 1.8 mg per kg as per the current evidence. Yes, another thing, the wire available are 100 mg, but one can do what is called as while pulling, one can do what is called as while sharing, and the dissolved while, again this is another thing, according to me, can be kept at least for four to six weeks. I don't know how many of you remember, when the trastuzumab first came, it was not that uh, told that a trastuzumab while can be kept for four weeks. It came later, much later, when the patent was going to expire and all the generics are going to come, they started saying, no, 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 we can keep the vial for four weeks. So the same way is probably, if you go to the PKPD studies of the original Neva and Pembro, I feel, and there are published literature, which says that the vial can be kept for at least four to six weeks, and all these studies are done by the original company only. The Merck studies only, PKPD studies are done by a pharma company, not by us. Out of that 100 mg, they purchase 100 they get free. If it's 120 mg, 100 mg they get free and 20 mg they get free and that remaining goes to the basket. What is the difference? The, the, the remaining 80 mg huh. can be kept and can be used. So that, is that is exactly that, that, that is the difference. That, is that you can utilize the remaining 80 mg. You cannot just throw away the 80 mg dose is going to cost close to 1 lakh. So why to throw it away? MSDs, their PAPs are very limited. So if you look at the breast data, the Keynote 522 data, probably it will take another year year for the Keynote 522 to, to be approved in India. So each time, at least if you're giving the new adjuvant phase 8, you, each each dose is probably 4 lakh. So, so the PAP, PAP right now is only for, uh, for fixed dose or for MG per kg, whatever two indications that I have shown, melanoma and uh, non-small cell lung cancer second line. Okay. You don't give 200. Okay. You give 100, 100, 100, then give 200, 100, but then you get the response. That's what we do in the clinical practice. <laughs> there are ways of getting it, but the point is that one should start utilizing it and compile such data and publish such data. If somebody like Taiwan and Belgium is publishing their data, that also a pharmacist. We are, are medical oncologists. Whilst being kept for four to six weeks, so the more and more data will be required for that whether that is feasible or not, PKPD, yeah. based on that principles. So we have some data, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, when we have written the paper of uh, the call for policy change, as well as when Vijay has given this paper for low-dose NIVO, the references is there. I mean, it is already done by the original company only, and their studies only have shown that the drug is stable for at least four to six weeks in a dissolved form also. In the dissolved form. Because most of the drugs in dissolved form, you can keep for yes. 24 to 48 hours. There is no, there is no, no. See, the same thing happened with trastuzumab. No? Trastuzumab can be kept in dissolved form. 440 mg vial can be used up to four weeks. So, uh, any other I questions? Think there are no more further questions. So, you want? Awaz ne bharatu da. The mar mark has stopped your mic here. <laughs> so I must congratulate you. The way you, know, you have started this wave along with Amul. I was one of the few you know, oncologists who used actually the half the dose of pembrolizumab and fantastically worked. But having said, I know as you rightly mentioned, we should pull the data and there has to be you know, our Indian data and some kind of a literature when you sit and discuss with the patient. Because somebody who is paying lakhs of rupees for the dose, he may not 
the moment you get the response then it's fine but the at the time there is a progression ulas the patient asks no i should have used so of course you are giving him the option so of have, fixed dose yes, first exactly so then if he is not affording for it exactly. then you go for so the low dose that's what i'm saying you rightly said you have to keep our data compile it and publish it that is where we are lacking yes yes thank you yeah you have